Welcome to this video in which we show how to convolve discrete time periodic signals. It works a lot like convolving other discrete time signals, uh, but there's a few little tricks. And we'll illustrate this with an example that you see a lot, which is um, convolving a square wave with itself. Um, this shows up a lot when you're doing uh, Fourier transforms because it allows you to get a Fourier transform pair that's pretty, pretty slick. So um, anyway, that's the goal, is to show you how to uh, do a, a discrete time periodic convolution. So the idea is we have two signals, which I've called X and Z. I haven't called the second one H. Um, I haven't called this guy H because you typically don't see systems that have periodic impulse responses. Uh, they can exist, and sometimes you'll see it happen, but Typically, when you're doing a periodic convolution, you're typically dealing with two signals. And so uh, both of the signals are periodic with period n, which means that the convolution of the two signals is also periodic with period n. So y, which is x convolved with c, will be periodic. And it turns out that the formula uh, for doing this is to, it looks a lot like the discrete time convolution in fact, it looks exactly like the discrete time convolution, except you sum over one period rather than summing over uh, k going from minus infinity to infinity. So that's really the only difference when you're convolving periodic signals, is this sum goes over one period. So um, to demonstrate this, we will uh, have y of n we'll actually let x of n be a uh, periodic square wave. So for the example that we'll do, n will be equal to 6. So it will look like this. And uh, we'll convolve x with itself. So we want to find x of n convolved with x of n. Okay, so the process, again, except for the fact that we're summing over one period, is exactly the same as when we did uh, uh, non-periodic signals. We'll take the second signal, uh, we'll flip it and shift it by n. So if we go to a picture, uh, this is the x that we're going to uh, convolve with itself. Again, it's a periodic square wave, three samples up, three samples down, and so on. Uh, this, in this next picture, I've flipped it about the value k is equal to 0. And then uh, we'll multiply these guys together. This picture corresponds to the case where n is equal to 0. So I have x of 0 minus k. So um, we flip this guy, then we multiply x of k and x of minus k together. And there's only one uh, value here where the non-zero, or one k where the non-zero values overlap, and the product there is 1. So y of 0 is going to be the sum over one period, and I can make that go from, say, 0 to 5. Or if I want to, I can make it go from minus 3 to 2. As long as I just sum over one period here, um, no matter how I do the summation, I'll have a value of y of 0 is equal to 1. Okay, well, um, and you can see then that if I had, well, I don't think I've got a picture of it. No, I don't have a picture of it. So um, if I had the case where, where n is equal to 1, then I would have x of 1 minus k, so these guys would each be shifted over 1. So I would have um, this guy here, not this guy. Uh, I'd end up with uh, the 0 and the 1 term multiplied together. So I'd end up with this. And you can see then, again, summing over one period, and it doesn't matter which period it is, I would have um, y of 1 is equal to 2, these two guys. Okay, so it continues on in this fashion. 
uh, in the case where uh, n is equal to 2, now I have uh, all three non-zero terms of x lining up with all three non-zero terms of x of 2 minus k. Again, I can sum over any six consecutive six samples I want, and I get y of 2 is equal to 3. And you can see, uh, for the case where n is equal to 3, again, uh, this guy goes back to 0, this guy goes up to 3, this guy goes up to 3, and uh, I think that's pretty much everything that would change, uh, because I would have 0 times 1, this green one here goes to 0. Everything else is the same. So you can see then that y of 3 would be 2. And in a similar way, uh, in fact, I think I've got this one drawn. Uh, this is the case where n is equal to 4. And when the in the case where n is equal to 4, I only have one value where the non-zero parts overlap. So again, choosing I probably shouldn't do this, but it's kind of fun to choose different um, one-period intervals to sum over. So if it's bothering you, you can always choose 0 to 5, or you can always choose minus 3 to 2, but I don't know, somehow it just seems kind of fun to randomly select which interval you're going to sum over, because it doesn't matter. So in this case, where n is equal to 4, I've got y of 4 is equal to 1, and finally, uh, when n is equal to 5, uh, nothing non-zero overlaps, and so when n is equal to 5, y of 5 is equal to 0. And you can see then, when n is equal to 6, uh, I would shift this one more, and it turns out that I start over again. Uh, in, in the sense that when I've shifted 6, uh, you can't tell the difference between that and when I haven't shifted at all. Uh, although I wouldn't have all this messy stuff that I messed up here. So the idea is that um, because it is a periodic convolution, I have to look at all possible time shifts over the range of one period. And when I do, that gives me one period of the output signal, in this case y. So to summarize this, well, here we'll actually make ourselves a brand new clean window to summarize this. We had uh, values of n and y of n. So when n is equal to 0, y of n was 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5, 0. So our y of n looks like this. And this is periodic, so I can keep drawing this pattern over and over and over. I'm not going to. And for the example we did, this was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the example. The last thing that I would say, the part that I'm hoping that you uh, realized, is whenever you take a square pulse or a uh, square wave where the duty cycle is 50%, or in this case, if you take a square wave where you've got a repeating square pulse, and the duty cycle is 50%, uh, you get a nice uh, triangular wave out. If you take two square pulses, so if we weren't doing uh, periodic signals, but we were just doing arbitrary signals, either continuous or discrete time, if you take two, or if you take an arbitrary rectangular pulse and convolve it with itself, you get a triangle. And this is something that I'm not sure it's that important in the real world, but it shows up all over the place on tests and in homework problems. So if for nothing else, it's a very useful thing to be able to do. 
So that concludes this example. Uh, again, hopefully you've uh, understood the idea of periodic convolution, how it differs from non-periodic convolution. And again, the way it differs is the summation is over one period. And uh, the example made sense to you. So uh, thanks for watching.